prologue. Dreams come in many forms. Some good, some bad, some very realistic. Even ones that feels very real. A dream may come to us from happy events, or even stem from bad events in our lives. Some come to us as a pleasure dream. And some come as nightmares. Some become vague memories after time, while some stay very rich in our minds. This is a story about a dream I had. A dream that became more dreams. A dream that would end one night, then resumes the next. It became like a second life. Ever since I became a Zelda fan, I grew an interest in Link. I thought of him as the perfect man. One that you could not find of this world. I thought of him as a man that should have been. The more that he attracted my attention, the more I became more attracted to him. I felt like there was a connection between him and me. Then he became a part of me, and after that, I fell deeply in love with him. I know that may sound queer to you, but love is a mysterious thing and should not be taken lightly. Love is a very strong emotion, an emotion that should be treasured. Love comes from the heart, but when it takes hold, it's got you. I quite don't understand it myself, but I do know that when I first laid my eyes upon Link, I fell in love with him. My heart just told me it was right. Told me he was the one, the one I had been searching for. Ever since then, I have felt that it was destiny that has brought me to him. Even in my mind, it feels the same. I don't consider myself any different from anyone else. Though I have love for someone that is not really there, he will always remain very real to me, inside my heart and in my mind. Even to this day, I still love him. He has kept me very happy. He has made me happy when I was sad. He has made me feel stronger about myself. He has even taken care of me in ways that no one else can. Even though I have feelings for him, I'm not any different from the rest of you. I have all, will always hold him close to me in my heart. He is still on my mind, and I still have dreams. The connection still remains strong, and the dreams very real. I lived an entire life with Link in Hyrule, all stemming from a series of dreams. Dreams that I want to have. Dreams that I make happen. From the first day I met him to the birth of our first child. To even the days when Link and I prepared our family in, in the event that Ganon should return. This book is based on my inner life. A second life lived in a faraway land in another time. In another dimension. A tale of love, passion, despair, and hope. I enjoyed my inner life. I looked forward to going to sleep to it every night. And I look forward to ones that will come, because love will never die! The beginning. I will never forget the day, the day I met Link. It was a warm spring day. I was on my usual trip back to Hyrule with my wagon of goods to sell in Hyrule Market at the annual spring festival. One. I have been a traveling merchant since I was fourteen. This is my sixth year returning to Hyrule. The last two years I was not able to return when Princess Zelda sent word of an evil presence in Hyrule. Then all contact was lost. For almost two years I tried to contact Princess Zelda. Desperately I kept trying to find out if she was okay. I was never too long without contact with my good friend. Then I was considering going to investigate, when one day, word came in that peace had been restored to Hyrule due to the legendary Hero of Time. After some catching up time with my old friend, I came to find out what really happened. Seems that a Gerudo named Ganondorf, an evil man from Gerduo Valley, desired the legendary Triforce. Though the Triforce was only told in fairy tales to the children where I come from, I was amazed to find out it really existed! She told me how she played with things she knew nothing about. And about how Ganondorf tricked the soon-to-be Hero of Time into unlocking the door to the Sacred Realm. I even noticed that Zelda was a little older than I. Last I saw her, she was four years younger than me. 
It was told to me that when Gan on Dorf went into the Temple of Time and into the Sacred Realm, time jumped ahead in Hyrule seven years. Yet only two years passed in my land, and in the rest of the world. After the hero of time defeated the king of evil, the hero was granted to either return to the past or to remain in the present time. Since she chose to remain in the present, Zelda jumped ahead of me in age by four years. It seems that everyone in Hyrule jumped in age from the rest of the world. But now that peace was restored, life resumed in Hyrule. As I made my way down the desert trail that led to Hyrule, I began to think about whom... The legendary hero of time was. I was very interested in meeting this man. Princess Zelda never told me his name, but I was going to make it a point this time to finally meet Hyrule's hero. As I turned off the dirt trail and onto Hyrule Field, Hyrule Castle appeared in the distance. Dust and dirt kicked up behind the wheels of my wagon as it creaked along. Then I came closer to the gates of Hyrule Castle. A familiar face appeared to greet me. I pulled back on the reins to make the horses come to a complete stop at the front gate, and I realized that the person greeting me was my good friend, Princess Zelda. Good. I have been a good friend of the royal family ever since my first arrival in Hyrule six years ago for Hyrule's annual spring festival. Ever since the first day I met the princess, I have been one of her closest friends. I was even considered part of the royal family. After I climbed down from my perch on the wagon, I ran over to Zelda and hugged her. Hello, Princess Zelda, my good friend. Yes, it is good to see you. How have you been? Looking at her, I could tell she was happy to see me. Oh, it is so good to see you again, my friend. Come, come. Father is waiting to see you. Leaving my wagon to be tended to by the stable hands, I followed Zelda through the marketplace and to the gates that led to the castle. As we approached the castle gates, I saw some of the same guards I have seen in the past few years. Saluting to Princess Zelda and me was a guard named Parino. I met him a few years back during one of my first visits to Hyrule. He was one of the guards that befriended me the first time I arrived. He smiled a friendly smile as we passed by. It's nice to see you again, Mistress Jenna, he said as he waved. As I smiled back, I thought to myself how good it was to be back again. We went through the front gate and made our way towards the palace garden. Upon approaching the gates leading to the garden, another familiar face appeared to greet me. As we walked closer, I realized that the face was of Zelda's caretaker, Impa of the Sheikahs. Oh, my! As I walked over to Impa, she turned to fully face me, and a small smile crossed her face. It's good to see you again, my friend. How has life been treating you? Impa asked and put a hand on my shoulder. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. Oh, fine. Nothing out of the ordinary. I had to chase some thieves off. On the first night that I was on my way here... Though after some facing time off, I was able to ca chase them away with my bow. Then I made a big grin, as I remember the looks on the thief's faces when I rained arrows on them! Well, it seems that with the abilities you possess, you should have no problem keeping your possession safe. With another smile, in gestured for us to go into the garden. That is when I met him. The man that took my heart. As he walked into the garden, I saw a young man in green with his back facing us, polishing a rather odd sword. As I watched him, I began to notice something about the sword. It had a rather odd shape on the hilt. The hilt was blue with the top of the hilt looking like a fish's tail. The sword looked rather strangely familiar. I leaned over to Princess Zelda and asked her who the young man was. That is a legendary hero of time, his name is Link, Zelda replied. Great! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! My inner life will be right back in a week.